Hello PGS friends, welcome back to my channel Microbiology Simplified. I am your guide and mentor Dr. Amit Kumar Singh and I am again here with another video of PYQ series and this video is on the topic actinomycosis. This video is very short and crisp and I have included all the necessary information which is required to solve all the MCQs from this topic. So just start with the video without wasting any time. So actinomycosis PYQ number 12. So the MCQ asked in this was about a 30 year old patient who presented with mass in some mandibular area without any other symptom. He gave a history of dental extraction three days back on examination oral mucosa does not have any ulcer. Macroscopic examination of the discharge revealed yellow granules and microscopic examination of gram restrained smear from the granules showed gram positive filamentous rod. So what is the most likely causative agent? So on the basis of these information, we have to solve the question. So even, it is, even if you don't know, um, too much information about the disease, you will be able to solve the question on the basis of the last information given that is the gram stain smear feature, gram positive filamentous rod. If you see the option, the first uh, option mucormycosis, second histoplasmosis and this last option chromoblastomycosis, these three are fungal infections. Okay, The first one is caused by mucor, second one is caused by histoplasma and the third one chromoblastomycosis is caused by group of fungus and this is basically subcutaneous mycosis okay so only option which is a gram positive filamentous rod or a bacteria is actinomyces israelis so it is easy to solve this question just by seeing this information but then they definitely this same question is not going to get repeated not not the same option so for that you need to know about the other feature of the disease and the organism so that you will be able to solve any question related to this topic okay so I will see that what is the significance of this mass in submandibular area, what is the significance of dental extraction history and what is the importance of yellow granules in this disease and also is there any importance of this age of the patient. So let us see. So this actinomycosis is caused by actinomyces israeli. So this disease is actinomycosis which is caused by actinomyces israeli and as I told you it is a gram positive filamentous rod and what else what we need to know it is anaerobic okay or micro aerophilic okay anaerobic or micro aerophilic apart from this it is non sporing too so it does not form a spore. So what does it mean? It cannot survive outside human host or any other host. So for that, it the infection should be always endogenous. Okay. And this infection is commonly seen among young males. Okay. The range of age is from 30, 10 to 30 years. So in this question, if you see the age of the patient is approximately 30 years and also and the, there is a history of dental extraction. So what it indicates? That indicates that the infection is endogenous in origin. That means the infection which, which occurs in the submandibular area is actually reached from the uh, colonizer present in the oral mucosa and this organism this actinomyces israeli is a part of commensal flora of oral cavity okay so that is why the disease is actinomycosis on the basis of this information itself so we will see that whether this submandibular mass is a common presentation or not okay before that we need to know that there are three classic presentation which prompt the diagnosis of actinomycosis. So what are those three classic presentation which we, which we, uh, which is uh, required for diagnosis of actinomycosis? The first one is combination of chronicity, progression across tissue boundaries and mass. That means mass like feature, chronicity of the disease and progression across tissue boundaries. What does it mean? That this organism has the potential to spread across the tissue planes okay to spread across the tissue planes and also it has mass like features okay so what it will mimic it will mimic 
malignancy. So it is a very common DD of malignancy. And also in this disease, we will see development of sinus tract. And the characteristic of this sinus tract that it will spontaneously spontaneously resolve and recur. So it will close and then reopen. Close and reopen. Close at one point and re recur elsewhere. And then again it will open at some other point. So this sinus tract is another presentation commonly seen in actinomycosis. And then third is refractory or relapsing infection. This refractory or relapsing infection occurs after short course of therapy. Usually for the treatment of actinomycosis, the duration of treatment is very long. It is approximately a year. But if you will take a short course of therapy, you may find refractory infection or even if the infection is resolved, it will relapse. So these are the three classic presentation of actinomycosis. Okay? The clinical form which we can see in actinomycosis, the first one is cervicofacial and is the most commonest clinical form. It is seen among 60% of the cases. And the most common location of this cervicofacial actinomycosis is around the mandible, that is peri mandibular area okay peri mandibular area and the most common frequently isolated or frequently recognized area of infection is angle of jaw that is submandibular and thus this cervicofacial actinomycosis because of this is also known as lumpy jaw. Okay, remember this lumpy jaw is cervicofacial actinomycosis. And what else we can see? We can see development of sinus tract, which will spontaneously close and open elsewhere. Okay. Abdominal actinomycosis is seen in about 20% of the cases and this usually occurs following breach in GI mucosa due to some disease or any event. So, disease such as rupture appendix, rupture appendix due to appendicitis or ulcer diseases like peptic ulcer disease. And also in this case, we may find sinus tract or discharging fistula. Thoracic is seen in approximately 50% of cases. Also, one more thing about abdominal actinomycosis is the commonest site involved is ileocecal. Okay. Thoracic, we will see in among 50% uh, cases of actinomycosis and this thoracic actinomycosis, we will see mass or pneumonia. Okay, mass or pneumonia and this uh, lesion is suggestive of actinomycosis if it crosses faces or pleura or extend to the mediastinum or contiguous bones. So if there is absence of this feature that is there is no cross crossing of the infection through the fissure or through pleura or through mediastinum and bones so then it may be confused or may be mistaken with malignancy. So, this crossing of the infection through tissue planes is characteristic of actinomycosis and if it is absent, it may indicate or it may be mistaken with malignancy. So, malignancy is an important DD of actinomycosis. Okay? And then the fourth one is pelvic and genital 
it is rare actinomycosis however whenever it is present it is usually associated with iucd usage and usually the usage of iucd which is seen in the cases of pelvic actinomycosis is more than one year cns infection or cns actinomycosis is also there but it is very rarely seen okay and the diagnosis the diagnosis the single most helpful diagnostic maneuver is the demonstration of sulfur granules in pus and this sulfur granule is called as sulfur granule because it it's yellow color and what we will see microscopically we will see branching filamentous rods with tissue element in the center and club shaped structure in the periphery okay and this club shaped structure which is seen in periphery is, is basically antigen antibody complex and this phenomenon is known as splendor hopley phenomenon and this appearance is just like like this in center you will see this mass of uh, branching filamentous rod with tissue element and which is surrounded by this club shaped structure giving it a ray like appearance and this appearance is like sun ray so this is usually represented as sun ray appearance which is seen in case of actinomycosis. Remember this sun ray appearance is seen in actinomycosis and this is because of a splendor hopley phenomenon in which the center is formed by the branching filamentous rod along with the tissue element and periphery is because of antigen antibody complex which give it a club shaped structure. Okay, And culture is done both in broth and in solid medium. The broth is used as it is an aerobic organism. So broth, what broth will be used? thioglycolate this is a broth which is used commonly for isolation of anaerobic organism and solid medium which will be, will be used brain heart infusion agar supplemented with vitamin k okay and in broth what we will see we will see the growth will be in clumps giving it a bread crumb appearance bread crumb appearance okay and in solid medium what we can see the colony will look like molar tooth so molar tooth appearance of colony this is a characteristic feature and has been asked in the examination remember this molar tooth colonies or molar tooth colonies or spidery colonies these two are characteristic of actinomycosis or actinomyces is really and the treatment initially the treatment is with iv penicillin which is given for two to six weeks followed by oral penicillin or amoxicillin for 6 to 12 months okay if it is penicillin if the patient is penicillin allergic then we can use clindamycin or erythromycin surgery and debridement may be required in certain cases Okay, 
So if you see this image, you can see, you can appreciate this club shaped structure in the periphery and this cluster of bacteria along with the necrotic tissue element, tissue element in the center. So this gave it a sun ray appearance. Okay. And also in the gram stain, the colonies are branching filaments. So you can see the branching filaments. So if you see this image in the question, just mark it a branching filamentous rod. If it is purple in color, gram positive. Okay. So most of the branching filamentous rods are gram positive only. So gram positive branching filamentous rod, if you can see, just start thinking about actino. Mycetes. It may be actinomyces or it may be other species like nocardia. So I will discuss a nocard about nocardia in another video. Okay. And this colony, if you see, this colony just look like the molar tooth. Okay. So this is because of this appearance of the colony, it, the colony is called as molar tooth colonies. Molar tooth colonies. Okay. And also in this image, you can appreciate this molar tooth appearance of the colony. So, thus this given case is of actinomycosis. Now, you know the importance of dental extraction history, presence of mass in the submandibular area. This is the most common presentation and also the yellow granules which reveals the gram positive filamentous rod in the center. If you do have mentioned sun ray appearance also, you would, you would have been able to answer this question that this is the answer is actinomycosis or actinomyces is really. So I hope I was able to explain the topic and definitely this short and crisp video will be very helpful to you to answer all the questions related to this topic. So all the best. See you in the next video. Take care.